and I'm Dan McDonald, along with my regular broadcast partner, Hall of Fame coach Yvette Girard. And Yvette, I guess it's a sign of where this program has been in the past that last year this team went 41 and 16, a record that a lot of teams would just kill to have. And a lot of people considered it almost a down year, but there were a lot of trials and tribulations last year. This team may never get as much credit for what they did last year and accomplishing what they did. This year, they've come back with a vengeance. Well, I said all last year that Jerry Glasgow should have been the coach of the country in in the year because you think about the fact that he didn't even know his players' names, much less get to practice with them in the fall and he's he takes the job and he's just got to start playing in the spring so he can't make a lot of adjustments in their swings and change a lot of things because you just don't have time to work on all those things but now you can see the Jerry Glasgow influence on this team you know there the a ton of transfers he brought in an influx of talent um, there is no stop sign from Jerry Glasgow at third base he's got the Cajuns off and running fantastic pitching and oh my the hitting has come back with a vengeance are you surprised by this knowing Jerry Glasgow as you do no I'm not surprised he has so many contacts in the softball world I don't think he's ever gonna have a problem recruiting and he's a very good coach so you know he's gonna win and this program will continue to just dominate in the Sun Belt as they have this year you talked about this team can still pitch they can still play defense and they still run But this team particularly, as the saying goes, uh, they dig the long ball. They do, and uh, boy, don't the Cajun fans dig that long ball. You know, um, uh, everything in our game has been geared towards offense in the last 10 years, and of course the Cajun fans have been very, you know, uh, used to and uh, seeing that long ball hit here. They've been, you know, just accustomed to home run city, and it's back again in full force. We talked about hitting. 14 months ago, we didn't know who Summer Ellison was. She really came out of nowhere and surprised a lot of people. What does she do that has made her so much improved over the pitcher that you know, was around here for the last couple of years? Well, Dan, you, you said it. I, I read the box score that first night when she struck out 20, and I said, who is Summer Ellison, and where did she come from? Because you know, that's going to get anybody's attention, 20 Ks in one game. but. The fact that she's from Lafayette, Louisiana makes it that much sweeter. Um, What she does that's so good that a lot of pitchers can do is up and down. And there's a lot of good rise ball pitchers and there's some great drop ball pitchers, but she's got both. So she's changing eye plane. She's got a fantastic change up. So she's changing the timing of the hitters. And really that's what pitching is all about. This lineup up and down can be dangerous, but one person we've talked about all year, Alyssa Dalton has just been unbelievable. I think there's one number that jumps out at me. Uh, in the 16 game winning streak the Cajuns had between mid-March and mid-April, she hit 550. Now that's not 550 on base, that means she is getting hits 55% of the time she comes to the plate. That to me is just an amazing figure. How much fun mm-hmm. is she having? Um, there's no question when you walk up to the field and you watch just the you know, just the way they move about, the players move about, you, your attention and your eyes go immediately to Alyssa Dalton. You can just tell that she's special and is she ever special. She's got that mental approach to hitting and she's just confident in herself besides God giving her all of these natural talents. But what a streak, 550, my gosh. Uh, again, you know, she's having a lot of fun playing softball. The Sunbelt Conference Tournament's coming up in mid-May. Of course, the Cajuns will be a big favorite to win that tournament, but they're thinking past that. They're thinking long-term. In fact, Jerry Glasgow has already said he's not sure if he wants to be that number 15 or 16 seed, to ho- even to host a regional, because then you get paired up with that one, two, or three national seed. You've been you've been in this situation before. You've been coaching. Do you think about that sort of thing? You do, but you have so little say in it. I mean, yes, you you have a lot of say about w- working and winning on the field, but it's so up for grabs. Sometimes you have no idea what this committee is thinking with some of their pairings, and sometimes you do get lucky in the draw, and sometimes you get to put it mildly, the outright shaft. But so, you know, your job as the coach and the players is just to keep winning. Regardless of what happens, the Cajuns are going to be in postseason play in the NCAA tournament for the 20th, ninth time 
in the last 30 years. This lady was part of a lot of those, and they're going to be back this year, regardless of what happens from here on in. For Event Gerard, I'm Dan McDonald for Inside Louisiana Softball.